Of, uh, yeah, this technology, this technology. But, uh, you know, first of all, um, for anyone who's watching, um, unfortunately, I haven't been clever enough to have my phone next to me. So I don't know who's watching, but I think Lorraine may have her eye on anybody who's watching, anybody who's got any comments. So, uh, Good evening, everyone. My name is Christine, as you know, because you follow me on Facebook. <laughs> and uh, I'm so excited to be here live on my Facebook um, for the first time um, with Lorraine Weston, who is going to talk to us this evening about what she does. She's actually helped, she helps people who are struggling uh, in their careers, who maybe want to leave what they do now, but are not sure about how to move into a different job or whether they want to go self-employed or not and she sort of helps them kind of I suppose look at what skills they are already have and how to transfer those into something else so obviously Lorraine correct me if I am wrong but I am so excited to have you here this evening and to discuss this and I think we're going to have a lot of fun and I think it's going to be really helpful for so many people out there because of everything that you know we're all going through at the moment there's going to be obviously a lot of people who are going to have to rethink their careers and their life and everything so thank you for joining me this evening Lorraine Oh, thank you, Christine. It's just such a pleasure to be here. And I'm very impressed with your technology skills, getting us up and running on Facebook. So uh, well done for that. And thank you so much for having me. It really is an honour. So I'm really pleased to join you and join your, your lovely group. So uh, it's a real pleasure. And um, just to really say a little bit about my background, I'm an occupational therapist. So my name is Lorraine Weston. Um, I trained as an occupational therapist um, and worked in conventional roles, but then I've had a very diverse career. And I'll probably tell you a bit more about some of the things I've done as we go through. Mm -hmm. um, but one of the things that has struck me in um, working with healthcare professionals and, and others is that it's really easy to feel a bit stuck. So if you're feeling at the moment that you feel stuck in your career and you're not sure what else you could do with your skills. You know, maybe particularly if you've been in one sector for a while or you trained for a particular role, you know, just first of all, I just want you to know that actually you do have more options than you're probably aware of. Um, and you do have control over more than you think. And I just think that at the moment, that's so important because so many aspects of control feel like they've been taken away from us. Um, mm -hmm. you know, we haven't got a lot of control over how we work, how we shop, you know, we might have planned holidays and they've come to nothing, you know, I've known friends who've had weddings cancelled and so on. And then of course, you know, a lot of people have been really impacted in terms of health or health of loved ones. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you feel like you've lost a lot of those areas of control in general life, then feeling like you're stuck maybe in a job that's really not working for you and impacting your home life can be, you know, a real challenge. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's sucks your energy, sucks your joy. Um, so the first thing I just wanted to start off with really is, you know, you really do have options. And I hope that, you know, by the end of our time together, you'll just have a few simple ideas of things that you could maybe start with straight away. Oh, that's lovely, lovely. That's lovely. Because I think, you know, that is one of the things, isn't it? When you feel really stuck, you just feel like you don't have a choice, don't you? And, uh, you know, for you to be here this evening and to actually um, help people see that there are, you know, choices and there are different directions that they can take, I think mm -hmm. it's just brilliant. So thank you. So what would be some things that, you know, you, you would say to people um, in this sort of instance, if somebody felt really stuck or maybe they are unsure as to whether they can even keep their job, you know, yeah. uh, because there is all that uncertainty as well at the moment, isn't there? What would you, what would be the first thing that, you know, somebody like that, what, you, what, would, what would you say to them <laughs> to help them so, understand they have these options, I guess? Yeah, and, and obviously I do recognise that in some sectors in particular, it could feel really challenging. So if your job is under threat and you know that there you know, are widespread cutbacks in your sector then the first thing is your anxiety level is going to you know to rise you know especially you know you have commitments um and there's that fear you know well what am i going to do where am i going to get a job um and i think you know it's just sort of recognizing the value of transferable skills mm -hmm. so knowing that you know you might have worked in one area so 
in the area I work in healthcare, in, in healthcare, you know, people tend to train for a particular role. So I trained as an occupational mm -hmm. therapist. Some of my clients have trained as physios or nurses. So obviously these aren't sectors that are so much Im impacted by jobs just disappearing, but they are impacted by changes in role or people no longer feeling that that job is sustainable for them. And it can be um, difficult when you're very close to your skills to recognize how valuable they are. Yeah. So, you know, it's just really being able to maybe, you know, step back and either take some time for yourself to really think about all the different things that you've done. Mm -hmm. um, so just recognizing you have those skills. And um, there's an exercise that um, I find is very often helpful, actually. And that's thinking about your, your career timeline and all the skills that you've used and in particular, thinking about what you've loved to do. Mm. So, you know, it's very easy if you feel trapped to maybe just jump into the first opportunity that you get. But what that can mean is you then feel just as trapped in another role. So as you're thinking about all the things that you've done, not maybe just in work, but also in um, maybe community work or charity work that you might have done, even things within the family or activities you just enjoy for leisure. You know, just really thinking about those things and thinking about what skills you've been using when you've really felt like the best version of yourself. You now, who have you been working with? So just trying to build a picture. So I'm someone who really quite likes to move around. You can tell I'm even moving around in my chair. But, uh, <laughs> so I find it quite helpful to sort of walk along as if I'm walking along the timeline of my career. So I'll oh, start somewhere, which I think of as the start, and then just walk along and sort of think, maybe talk into my recorder on my phone or make notes. So just, you know, things that have been real highlights, you know, where I felt really positive, um, quite fulfilled what kind of thing I was doing, who I was with, and also making a note of anything that didn't feel like it's worked so well. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, I know that jobs where I've been glued to a computer for hours on end just haven't worked for me at all. And no. that's useful for me to know and be aware of that. Yeah, you know, but I know- so you're, saying sort of, so you're saying actually go outside somewhere where you've got a bit of space, maybe in your yeah. garden. Yeah. And then, you know, have a little recorder or something with you and then sort of physically yeah. walk yourself through the steps. That's a fantastic idea. I love that. What a great exercise. It's really good. There's something about the physical movement that can also help you to move on in, the, in your thinking as well, I find. Mm. So, you know, it just helps you to sort of then, you know, walk through, think about, um, you know, the things that you've done. And often you'll remember things that, you, you know, you'd completely forgotten about. Um, yeah. Or, you know, when you think about the skills you were using in a job, realise there was much more to it than you had realised. You know, you might have needed great organisational skills or you dealt with pressure really well. You know, these sort of skills are really transferable. Mm. Um, but a key thing in terms of noticing those high points, you know, is, is that can spur you on to think about your values and what's really important to you. Yes. So, you know, it's just trying to then think, you know, okay, if I know that's important to me, you know, make a note of that because you want to try and create not just work you love, but a life that you love mm. rather than, you know, creating something that ends up being a bit of a nightmare, mm. um, but actually thinking about what's really important to you. I've just noted that Susan is watching us and said hi. Oh, so hi, hi, Susan. Susan. Hi, Susan. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you. You, you know, well done for thinking about being able to read the comments, you know, which is oh. something I didn't even think about. That's fantastic. Yeah, and that's the thing, isn't it? When we kind of, because there's so many people, isn't there, that have like, you know, they maybe have their family life sorted, but then their work yeah. life is just, you know, horrible or the other yeah. way around, you know, their work might be fantastic and then, you know the, the family is great or you know it mm -hmm. their health is maybe great but um it's just trying to like get it all you know right it's just so yeah. difficult isn't it unless you spend a bit of time thinking about it and working out what you really value mm. i don't know how many people actually ever ever do that and really sit down and and talk about and think about what yeah. they value it's a really uh, important thing to do isn't it it's a really good point, actually, because I think often people only think about it when things really start to, to feel very difficult and very challenging. Mm. So, um, and you can find that 
it, it can be hard for people to maybe even pick out where the problem lies. So, you know, some people I've worked with have really felt that their job is just unsustainable and awful and they need to change their job. But then when they start to think about their values, they realize that actually there's things that have slipped that, you know, they've actually stopped mm. doing a lot of the things that make them feel them, you know, are core to who they are and really align with who they are. So um, actually, uh, and that can come from work pressures, you know, and you feel very drained um, of energy when you come home. It can be hard to make the effort to maybe go out and see friends or get on with something that you would love to do. Mm. But it means that actually looking at life as a whole rather than just focusing on work or just focusing on outside of work can be really helpful so mm. i've known some people who've really thought that work was the problem and actually when they started um reconnecting with some of the things they'd used to enjoy but have just got squeezed out maybe the busyness of life or changes that have happened they suddenly realized actually they then had the energy and quite enjoyed the stimulation of the work you know oh, very cool. overwhelmingly stressful I mean, that's from a better, better place. Actually, all of a sudden, it felt a bit more manageable. Yeah. So it is that holistic perspective which can really make a difference. So what you do really, so what you do really is about, uh, you know, sort of looking at your whole life, every aspect of it, and not just your career, but every single part of it. So mm -hmm. it's almost like a chance to really pick your life apart and 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 just working out what's really going on beneath the surface. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yes, you know, thinking about what's important and not losing sight of that as you look at that bigger picture. Mm. So making sure that as you then put a plan in place to move forward, you have that sort of goal in your mind, not as a target that you have to hit, but as maybe principles and values that you know are really important um, in terms of, you know, what, what you want to create in mm. the future. And do you think it makes it easier when you do that? Do you think it makes it then also easier to make decisions in life, you know, and to actually decide what, you know, what is right and what's wrong for you, I guess, when you, when you have those things in place? Definitely. I think, you know, um, you, you find that your values then are a bit of a barometer that tell you, you know, what the sort of temperature is or what the weather is, if you like, you know, in different situations um, or a compass that gives you a bit of a guide. Yeah. So I know for me, like autonomy and flexibility are really important. That's partly because I want to be able to be responsive to the needs of my family. So mm. I want to be able to have an element of control in that. So there have been some jobs which I've looked at and I just know, although there are some really positive aspects of them, I wouldn't have that freedom and that flexibility. So mm. it's unlikely to work for me. And that's probably why, you know, so I work for myself, you know, in a, a coaching business, helping people move forward in this way. And I'm also a sessional lecturer. Um, and having that sort of, you know, both of those roles do have an element of flexibility in built. So, you know, I have a bit more control than I might have done if I'm just in, was just in a full time employed role. Mm. And that's intentional because I know when I'm not honoring those values, I feel trapped, I feel stifled, I feel like I don't have the opportunity to do the things that are important to me. Mm. So um, if you're clear about your values and what's important, then you can make sure that your, your decisions align with that and start to create possibilities for you to actually you know, live those values out, which makes a huge difference. Yeah, it sounds for a much nicer, happier life, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely, yeah. yeah. So is there anything else that you want to sort of add to that whole, whole mix um, at all that I can? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, so basically, if once you have an idea of your, your values, um, you know, that it's important to find a way of expressing that, you know, whether you write it down as a sort of statement, whether you draw it, mind map it. I'm very much a mind map person myself, so my, my coloured pens and things, mm -hmm. but, you know, to capture those values so that you've got that um, and, and make sure that, you know, you're living aligned with that. Um, but the other thing is to really think, you know, so it's not always possible to make a change straight away. Sometimes it's a, a plan. So, um, there was a particular point in my career where I actually had a five-year plan. Mm, so it wasn't wow. something which was overnight at all. Um, so I'd gone from working as an occupational therapist in the NHS, 
Mm -hmm. During training as a sports massage therapist with an idea of having my own business, so I'd have a bit more flexibility. Um, and then it was announced that we were getting the Olympics in this country. And I just knew that I really wanted to go for being a massage therapist at the Olympics. Oh, so wow. we had about five years notice to um, prepare for that. Um, so I did all the research thinking, you know, what could I, you know, what would I need to do most likely? So, you know, I really threw everything at it. So I did a master's degree. I did retrained in my sports massage. And then I knew I had to try and find some elite experience. So again, planning a place. I was at that time working at a really low level of non-league football. Mm. And I remember being interviewed by the um, secretary there for the um, magazine. He said, oh, yeah, what's your ambition? I said, well, actually, I'd really love to work at the Olympics. And this was working in, you know, say... County League football, and he, he literally laughed at me. Oh wow! Um, but now I've you know got a job through treating well the players that were there that progressed to a slightly higher team, still non league. I went there, and then at a networking event, I spoke to the chair of Sussex County Cricket and managed to get introduced to the physio there, so I could get some elite experience. So I was basically trying to put together all the pieces of the jigsaw that would give me the best opportunity of being successful of getting to the Olympics. Wow. But hey, this was a five-year plan. So mm. it was not something that happened overnight. And, uh, and then I applied and then I put myself forward for every test event they had going. So if you looked at the cost, it must have cost me so much in terms of my travel, in terms of lost income and all my training. But, you know, when the Olympics came, I was working in the um, aquatic centre as part of the medical team there. And I worked at the Paralympics yeah. with the gold ball and so on. Um, and the, the absolute irony of this is I was absolutely <laughs> the worst girl in my school at sport. <laughs> literally, I was the slowest, the, the most uncoordinated. So if anyone from my secondary school ever knew that I had gone to, and had this career in, in working in sport, they'd have actually thought that was hilarious. But, uh, but you know, but the important thing, you know, is, you know, to A, know that you can do, you know, you can be very intentional in putting a long-term plan in place, mm -hmm. but also that's important to enjoy the journey. You know, if I'd spent five years having the worst time and doing all those things through gritted teeth, then it wouldn't have been worth it. No. I might not have got to the Olympics, but at least I would have known that I, you know, I was so much better at what I did for giving it a go. So, and, and I'd enjoyed that journey. Yeah, so it's really, you know, it, so it's a matter of thinking, you know, it might not be possible to get your dream job tomorrow, but, you know, you can put a plan in place and think about what resources you already have, mm -hmm. what resources you could put in place, you know, do your research, find out about the job role that you would really enjoy, um, you know, what are the skills, what are the knowledge, what are the experience that you need, how can you get that? How can you do that maybe alongside something that's bringing in the money that you need um, and to really invest in and enjoy that that personal development and that growth process because you know that's so important as well yeah so um that's amazing i mean you must have felt so amazing when you were there after that five-year plan you know came into being and you were there doing your thing you yeah. must have just felt so good wow yeah and and it, and it is that you know deeply satisfying when you work towards something yeah and you know you achieve that and you know perhaps especially when it is you know can be quite quite costly in terms of your investment but mm -hmm. then to get there you know it was just a you know a remarkable experience and i do remember standing on one of the bridges um after an evening shift so it was dark all the lights were sort of twinkling and just feeling such a deep sense of gratitude yeah. that i could be there and, you know, that I'd had that vision five years earlier, you know, um, and, you know, been able to, and, and, you know, been supported and, you know, had everything I needed to, to put that in place. Mm. But, but to, absolutely, you know, that is not because I'm sort of special in any particular way that, you know, anybody could do that, you know. So it's, you, you can think, you know, if there's something that you know you really would love to do, Mm -hmm. And, you know, take the time, you know, research it, you know, think about what skills you already have, think about what skills you might need, 
Um, think about your network and how you can grow your network to include people that can help you on your journey mm. and be bold and ask for help. So, you know, there's lots of different things you can do to increase your chance of getting there and, you know, and be prepared to, to enjoy each step of the way rather than just having it, that goal that you just are desperate to reach, but more, yeah. you know, a, a path to enjoy. Fantastic. So, yeah that's lovely um yeah did you know i i didn't know that about you actually lorraine you know you yeah. sort of you know sort of yeah i know lorraine a little bit you know we've had quite a few in fact i have had some coaching with lorraine as well and she's absolutely brilliant so uh she's a, she's a great in, and there was one session we had together not so long ago where i had a will aha moment you know <laughs> and uh and so she is a wonderful coach and really great at helping you sort of reframe things for yourself or, you know, seeing between the lines and sometimes, you know, having those aha moments, they're really important, aren't they? You know, mm. sort of, oh, I get it now. That's yeah. where I'm stuck. Yeah, very important. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, you know, I mean, all this advice is just so useful. You know, I think it's fantastic. And I hope that uh, anyone who's listening, have we got any viewers there at the moment? Is Susan still there or has she disappeared? Six people are oh, winning. Oh, six and, people. And um, Susan's, I think, still there. Yep. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> okay. thanks so, very much. Uh, we appreciate it. Yes. You. So, hello, everyone has any who's questions? watching. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, I, as I said earlier, I haven't been, uh, you know, that great at. Um, working out how to see the comments at the same time because this is all new to me doing it through zoom so you know if anyone has any questions for lorraine um you know please feel free to comment um if and a hi from linda as well so oh, hello linda, linda. So hi, thank linda. you very much for contributing <laughs> yeah because yeah, you know or even if you have any questions later um mm -hmm. in fact um there was something that you wanted to share with people as well wasn't there there was you, you know you Absolutely. have a little, little yeah. tool people can use um mm -hmm. that, that you can download and uh, help you if maybe you can explain it better than me uh, <laughs> yeah. so um when we've finished i'm just going to put a link in the comments to an online journal so it's just really you know a place where you can start to think perhaps about some of these things, your values, think about your strengths, you know, those qualities that you know you're at your best when you're, you're using. Um, and you can download it, save it to your PC, and then it's, um, you can fit it in as a form fillable PDF. I'm not sure that the form fillable aspect works so well on mobile, but it definitely works if you download it onto your computer. So mm. it's just really an opportunity for you to um, you know, take that time, give yourself that gift of time mm. to reflect. Yeah. And you know, one thing I would say, you know, if you're finding things difficult now, but at the moment you just you know, feel there's so much going on that you, know, you maybe feel it doesn't feel like the right time for you to make a, a big change. You know, but just start, even just starting that process of you know, thinking about the direction you'd like to head in can be really helpful you know say you know to, for me to make really quite a dramatic change and achieve a, a significant goal for me took five years so it's not to say that if you're feeling unhappy now you have to make the change right away mm -hmm. you know but just having a sense of direction can make all the difference yeah and actually do you know, Lorraine, i think it makes life so much more exciting to be sort of almost heading somewhere you know doesn't it yeah. It really yeah. does, you know, because it just feels like you're not stuck anymore, doesn't it? It feels like you're, you know, on a journey towards somewhere, you know, yeah. <laughs> somewhere exciting. Yeah, and it, it does, it makes sense. And you start to feel like you have more control, you yeah. know, because you're putting a plan in place. Yeah. And the other thing that that gives you the opportunity to do then as well is to think, you know, what can you be grateful for in your life now that actually is helping you towards that goal? So there might be aspects of your job that you really don't like or you're struggling with or, you know, things that you're juggling outside of work, especially at the moment. But it might be that it's helping you to develop the resilience it's going to help you to achieve that goal. It might be that it's building a network that might help you to achieve your goal. So, you know, there, there's always, you know, no, no experience is ever wasted in my experience. And that's um, from someone who's, you know, tried jobs who you know within a couple of weeks I just know you know this really is not the job for me yeah. but they've still been useful stepping stones to other things that have been better 
Yeah. But the thing about you, Amy, though, is that you are such a positive person, aren't you? You know, and you're always able to somehow, you know, find a different way of looking at it. And uh, and I think that is that is the thing about you is that you're like sort of almost like a a great big sun, you know. <laughs> and uh, you know, you're always helping me sort of like go. Oh yeah, no, actually, that's a good way of looking at it. And it's just just a brilliant brilliant uh, quality to have. You know, always being able to sort of uh, turn it around for yourself and flip it around towards something uh, positive and useful and something that you're learning from. So, you know, I think that is um, clearly something you are very, very good at, isn't it? And good at in sort of helping others see as well. So, um, yeah. Do you not think, am I, am I kind uh, yeah, of... Yeah, <laughs> I, I am a positive person. I did once have a boss who told me I was too positive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If there could be such a thing, obviously, yeah. yeah. But... You know that is uh, that is the lovely a lovely quality that Lorraine has is that she is so positive. You know, and I consider myself a pretty positive person, <laughs> and I would actually say that you're probably more positive than me, and that says something. <laughs> very generous yeah. to say you two are very positive, but it is something that we can you know challenge our thinking on. You know, yeah. so if you find that you're dreading going in or you're feeling you know very stretched in your role. You know, just to sort of step back and think, you know, what can I be grateful for? You know, especially mm -hmm. if you know that you do have other plans moving forward, other things that you want to do in the future. Mm -hmm. You know, how is this experience helping me, even if it's not the experience I would choose right now? Yeah. So sometimes just reminding ourselves, you know, so, you know, just to, to find elements that we can be grateful for can yeah. make a real difference. And do you yeah. think Rachel, she's just uh, joined us as well. Oh, hi, Rachel. <laughs> uh, so do you think it's a good idea to write all those things down as well? You know, those things we are grateful for, because I always feel like, you know, when things are on paper, they're just yeah. so much more solid. And, uh, uh, you know, I've, I've got like a little gratitude journal. Mm. Uh, where is it? Somewhere there. And I actually get so excited every morning to be you know, running, I run over to my desk, you know, as soon as I've had my breakfast and then I write all my little things down. And, you know, and the more you do it, I think the more, there is to be grateful for really and the more exciting little things there are that you want to put in there that you know you're excited about because they happen yeah, absolutely yeah. and if you know you're going to write them down you're looking out for them exactly That's the other thing. so you pay selective attention to the things you're grateful for which yeah. is you know another real positive from that yeah. and you know that's one thing you know with the online journal you know you might want to you know just record in there the things you're grateful for yeah. And you might even end up from, you know, going from being stuck in your job to actually loving your job again as well, do you think? Well, I, I have <laughs> had that actually occasionally with clients who have really not, you know, not enjoyed their job. Um, but really it was external pressures that were draining their resilience in their work. And once they addressed those things and maybe looked afresh at their values, you know, work really wasn't the issue. Yeah. Um, so it's a, it's a great opportunity. It's a great way to you know really get to know what's going on because i think don't you think that we can be so sort of rushed in life can't we where you know we just start feeling these things and we don't take the time to really look and really reflect yeah. on what's actually going on and and then you know those feelings can sort of run away with us can't they and before yeah. we know it we find ourselves in this really stuck state and we haven't got a clue why so it's great to yeah. you know to have people like yourself who can help others you know get out of that rut and that stuckness and yeah. finding some clarity and finding some direction. So I think it's brilliant. But you know what, Lorraine, I'm just looking at the time and it's already half past eight. Can you believe it? It wow. just goes so quickly, doesn't it? Yeah, it certainly yeah. has. Yeah. And yeah. because I know that it's so hard to keep people's attention with these sort of things, I don't want to, you know, keep going really past half an hour. No. So what, what I would really like uh, you to do is just to tell people how they can get in touch with you if they want to know more, if maybe they want to work with you, and uh, maybe they want to get inspired by your positivity or, oh. uh, you know, you never know. <laughs> uh, so maybe if you wanted to tell people how they can get hold of you, and then we'll obviously put that in the comments afterwards as well. Oh, um, thank right. you. Yes, yeah, so I'll put a link in the comments, um, obviously, to the, the PDF. But I'll also put a link, you know, I've got a Facebook page myself, and I try and post fairly regularly in there, you know, sort of thoughts pretty similar to what I've shared, really, but things which I hope will be helpful to people trying to, you know, really build a positive life and a positive career 
yeah, mm. with real intention. So um, I'll put a link to my Facebook um, page on there as well, which you're very welcome to. Um, to uh, and Lorraine, let's say somebody. Join. Sorry, let's say somebody wanted to talk to you more. I mean, do you do like a sort of a, a, a discovery call or something oh. where people can just sort I, of say, "Look, this is what's going on for me. Is this something you can help with, or is is that how it works?" For you? I certainly do. Yes, and um, I always think it's just worth ha always having just a informal chat just to see, you know, explore what someone's looking for and just to see if I'm the right person. If I don't feel that, if we don't feel that I'm the right person, I'll always maybe signpost on or suggest someone who might be, but you know, it's just a really informal opportunity. So I'll put a link there. So um, if anyone is interested and just wanted to have a, an informal chat to see, you know, if working together might, might be a positive way forward, then yeah, that'd be, that's cool. yeah excellent yeah so yeah so i hope you've all enjoyed this chat you know i certainly have i've loved talking to the to lorraine this evening and um what i do is i will uh it's, it's i've recorded it so i'll be able to upload it to uh to facebook afterwards i guess and um in other places so if you want to catch the replay if you haven't watched the whole thing then you can do that so just for now, I'm going to say, uh, yeah, well, we're going to say goodbye, aren't we, Lorraine? And oh, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure. Yeah, yeah. This is the first sort of thing like this I've done, and I just didn't realise it was be so so fun and so relaxed. So you're an absolute star. Thank you. Well, it's been it's been yeah, it's been great fun. I just can't believe how quickly the time always flies when I do this. You know, it's just so much fun. So thank you so much for uh, coming, Lorraine. It's been such a pleasure talking to you. So yeah, we'll say goodbye to everyone. Goodbye, everyone. Have a lovely weekend, and uh, we will see you next Thursday again. Um, and there's going to be somebody else, but I won't announce it just yet. Uh, but you'll find out more probably on Sunday. So take care, everyone. Have Thank a lovely evening. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Take care. Bye bye. Okay. Bye. bye.